Love them or hate them, description files are a necessity of DCS livery creation. They are also one of the easiest things to get wrong. We answer a lot of questions on our Discord server and the majority of them are related to the description file. Therefore, I've decided to make this short video to hopefully help some people out. Today, we'll cover the structure of the file and also how to create one. I will not be going into detail on any other aspects of livery creation in this video, so check out my livery creation getting started video if you are looking for more information. Let's start with how to create your description file. Really, there are two primary methods. The first and probably most common is to copy one from another livery. In the DCS main install under your core mods aircraft liveries folder, you will find some liveries that come pre-installed with the module. These are usually very basic and will provide you with a good starting point if you are new to livery creation. Simply make a copy of it in your new livery folder. The second method, and the one I prefer, is to export one from the model viewer. We can use the Generate Livery File button to do this. At first, this will appear to be a complete mess, especially if you are new to this file. However, once you get it cleaned up, this method provides you with a lot more of the files used within the livery. Note that there will often be duplicate entries for the same texture. Be sure to clean these up while you move through it. Here is my cleaned up description file for the OH58D. First thing you'll probably notice is that I've added a lot of comments. I'll provide a link in the description if you want to go learn more about these. Now let's take a look at a single line within the livery table and break it down. The first section is where the texture is going to be applied. This is a model or part of a model defined by the developer. You should never edit this. The next section is the type of texture you are working with. The primary ones for the majority of livery creators are diffuse and roughness metallic. There are others as well, but if you are messing with them, I doubt you need the info I'm providing in this video. If you see specular instead of roughness metallic, you should change those out as well, as long as the model you are working on supports it. I think by now most models have been converted to PBR, but there still might be a few that use the old system. If in doubt, you can experiment with it, but in general, it's safe to change them out. Also, not all modules support rough mats or specular mats. I was looking at the SU-25A the other day and it still does not have rough mat or specular support. On occasion, you might also see numbers here. On screen now is the equivalent number for the type of texture you will most likely encounter. I do not recommend using the numbers as I have seen them cause issues more often than not. So if your description file has numbers, I recommend changing them out. Changing them out also makes it easier to see what you are working with without having to remember what the numbers represent. Now we are on to the third section. This is the file name of the texture you are using. More recently, I have gotten into naming my texture files in a format that makes sense to me. This means I have to change the name here in order to match the texture in my livery folder. However, it also means I can more easily keep track of the files I have created. Remember that a typo here will result in your texture not being found. The majority of my texture isn't working questions are linked to this section right here. Double, triple, and even quadruple check that the spelling is exactly the same as your texture file. Finally, we have the last section where you will see true or false. This will tell DCS where to look for your texture file. If it is set to false, it will use the folder that your description file resides in. If set to true, it will use the main install texture zip file that shipped with the module. If you are creating your own textures, you will be setting this default so that DCS knows to use the textures that you have created. If you have changed the name of your texture from the default and you set this to true, you will see that you will not get a texture on the model. This is because the file name that you have provided does not exist in the zip file where it is looking. That is the main section of the description file, but we also have a couple more things to look at. Below your main livery table, you can also find other features for your livery. Most common is the countries that it can be used with. If you want to limit your livery to specific countries, you can add them in a table here. For a list of country codes, I will provide a link to a table created by Backy51 in the description. However, in the majority of my liveries, I just comment this line out as I want to be able to use my livery no matter what country I am flying for. And finally, we have the argument section. 
These are directly related to the arguments that can be found in the model viewer. You can set the value of any argument to a valid range and when your livery is loaded, it will apply that argument if it can. For example, you can see that 446 will change the visibility of the tail number. I have it disabled because normally I don't like working with the adjustable number system. You might also notice that below this, I have a few arguments commented out. This is just a reference for me if I find myself using certain arguments often while working on a livery. Editing Ditcher here. I forgot to mention that you can also add a name in this section. If you don't put a name here, it will use the folder name of your livery. Some final notes. I often get asked how I arrange my files. Remember that spaces don't matter in Lua as long as you don't break the syntax. You can use tabs and spaces to line things up and make it easier to read. Also use comments to help you understand and remember things. Sometimes I might go months without doing a livery for a module and then when I come back to it, I'll forget what everything was. With a simple comment stating what a line is, I can quickly remember what everything is and save a lot of headache. And finally, remember that if you make any changes to your description file that you must restart the model viewer to see the effects. At first, the description files might seem overwhelming, but take the time to set them up right and you won't have a lot of issues. In the long run, it will just save you nothing but time and trouble. I hope this helps you out and thanks for watching.